I welcome everyone to this Easter Day worship. Just over 12 months ago, we were hoping to get back to face-to-face -face worship by Easter. We would never have imagined the necessity for online worship the following Easter, but we're here. And I'm in the garden, surrounded by our hens, and I'm hoping that we'll have two or three eggs today from these hens, a wonderful sign of new life at Easter. Where are you right now? Wherever you are, we are worshipping together on Easter Day, worshipping the God who is not confined by the tomb, is not confined by death, has not been confined by COVID or building closures or even social distance. God is COVID safe and with us wherever we are. My prayer is that you may know throughout this worship time that God is with you, revealed to you by the power of God's Holy Spirit and you may notice God's presence alongside you. The traditional call to worship in the church is for the congregation to respond to the call. Christ is risen with the response. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I hope that you can respond to that. Maybe stand up where you are if you're able to and engage in this worship in a lively way. Do respond with he is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let's worship together. Indeed, stand wherever you are if you're able. Sing like no one but God can hear you. He has risen.
life immortal We shall see him face to face Through eternity we'll praise him Christ the champion of our faith He has risen Let us pray. As we lift our praises to you today, we remember the victory you won on the cross, a victory over death and sin. And so we thank you, Lord, for the freedom that that brings to our life. And in this freedom, we want to live our lives dedicated to you, to love in the way you do, to walk in peace and contentment, in the way you did here on earth, to express the joy of a living relationship with you. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done for us. We praise and worship you today because you are almighty God. You have created wonderful things in this world for us to enjoy and delight in. Today, we thank you for all the joy which comes from a knowledge of your great love for us. We come before you to express our sorrow that we have not always lived our lives in the victory you have won on the cross. Sometimes we think only of ourselves. We ask that you will forgive us for the times when we have hurt people by what we have said and done. We thank you that you are a loving God who is always willing to forgive. And so we say we are sorry for the sin in our lives and ask for your forgiveness, knowing that if we are truly sorry, you will wipe our sins away. Amen. And now shall we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we go to our reading, which is from John chapter 20, starting at verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, but the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. 
As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? They have taken my Lord away and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, They have taken my Lord away, and I do not know where they have laid him. Jesus said to her, Mary. Rabboni, teacher. Do not hold on to me, because I have not ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. We share now in one of my favourites. We heard last week of the two walking on the road to Emmaus appeared to by Jesus who explained from Moses and the prophets all about what had happened and their hearts burned inside of them. As this modern hymn builds, my heart always burns inside of me. See what a morning, gloriously bright with the dawning of hope in Jerusalem. If we had been there on our first Easter morning, would we have believed? If we had journeyed with Jesus for three years, would we have understood why he had to die? If we had been there with Jesus in the upper room, breaking bread and sharing wine, going with him to Gethsemane, and then watching from a distance the events of Good Friday, 
the pain and suffering of the crucifixion, what would we have felt? The feeling of hopelessness, the thought of what am I going to do now? What were the past three years for? We come this Easter with many, many emotions. We may feel isolated, scared, fearful, apprehensive. We may be missing being able to celebrate Easter as fully as we can. It may feel that Easter is on mute, especially as we cannot gather to sing in church. But if it may feel that today our celebrations are muted, the message of Easter rings loud and clear. I would argue that the message of Easter gets stronger, especially at this time, as God breaks through and we can know his risen life and transforming power. Throughout Lent we have been exploring God's story, our story, and you may remember that we began the series the Sunday before Lent by looking at the same reading that we are this morning. This reading that captures something of the amazement and the wonder of the Easter story and the transformation that comes through the resurrection. I have to admit that this is my favourite resurrection account. There is the mistaken identity, there is the power of a name and there is Mary Magdalene declaring, I have seen the Lord. In all the resurrection accounts, I am amazed that the miraculous news is put in such fragile hands. Culturally, in New Testament times, the evidence of women was inadmissible in court. But women are the first witnesses, and the disciples do believe them. Hannah Steele writes it beautifully within her conclusion. On that first Easter morning, God could have chosen to make the news of Jesus' miraculous resurrection known in any number of ways. He could have emblazoned the declaration across the sky so all could have seen it and not doubted its veracity. He could have had Jesus appear alive in the presence of the crowd who had bathed for his blood. However, God chose the lips of ordinary women whose hearts were broken with grief, now erupting with joy, to be the vessels through which he would pass on this life-changing news. God chose an ordinary people with personal stories of redemption and imperfect words to tell the greatest news there has ever been. God continues to choose ordinary people. He chooses you and he chooses me to tell the story. The good news of love conquering hate, eternal life conquering death and forgiveness conquering sin. So let us look at our reading a little bit closer. Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb early in the morning and discovers that the stone has been rolled away. She runs to get Simon Peter and another disciple, thinking that someone has taken the body of Jesus away. Mary returns to the site and is clearly distressed. She is grieving the death of Jesus and is confused. Two angels appear where the body of Jesus was and they ask her why she is crying. And then another person asks, Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Mary thinks that this person is the gardener and then the whole situation changes. Jesus says her name and Mary replies, Rabboni, meaning teacher. She knows that Jesus is alive, that the unthinkable has happened, that Jesus is alive. There is such power in a name. Mary's life is changed beyond recognition. The reason for her grief and fear disappears in an instant and her life is transformed. 
as we come this Easter? Do we need to hear God speaking our name, stirring our hearts and filling us with hope, breaking into our sadness and confusion? Do we need to be reminded of the transforming power of God? God is concerned about us in all of our heartache and our brokenness, in our loneliness and isolation, in our pain and despair. Understandably, Mary wants to hold on to Jesus, but Jesus sends her to the disciples and she then declares, I have seen the Lord. Mary has seen with her eyes and touched with her hands Jesus. There is no doubt in her mind, she has seen the Lord. Have we seen the Lord? Do we know that God is with us? Do we know the joy of knowing Jesus? Jesus who is always with us and in our joys and in our sorrows, and in our suffering and in our pain, in our confusion. Jesus who offers us new life and new hope each and every day. This Easter, may we know the presence of the risen Jesus in our joy and in our suffering. God who comes to us. Let us hear God calling our name and let us boldly share the story of God's transforming and renewing love. For we have seen the Lord. I invite you to join in the response. Come risen Jesus. Into our longing as into the waiting of the disciples. Come risen Jesus into our isolation as into the locked upper room. Come, risen Jesus. Into our fear and doubts as into the questioning disciples. Come, risen Jesus. Into our despair bringing hope. Into our fears bringing peace. Into our sorrow bringing joy. Into death bringing life. Come, risen Jesus. Let us affirm our belief in God as we say together. I believe in the God of Easter morning, who awakes us from our darkest dreams and leads us into the light of a new day, who meets our pessimism with stunning hope of angelic proclamation. I believe in the God of Easter day, who beats us to the obstacles in our lives and empties a dark tomb for us, who appears in surprising ways when we least expect it, walking with us on our detours. I believe in the God of Easter evening, who breaks into our isolation, bringing peace and crushing our fear. I believe in the risen Lord, who meets us with wounds on his hands and feet, who grants us his spirit, sending us out to bring peace to the world. Amen. Knowing you, Jesus, knowing you, there is no greater thing. If today you do not know Jesus, then open up your life to him. And if you have known Jesus for a long time, but you need to know the joy of the risen Christ in your life, then open up your life to him as we respond in this song. Knowing you, Jesus, knowing you, there is no greater thing. You're my all, you're the best, you're my joy, my righteousness, and I love you.
As we bring our prayers for others, we remember that Jesus died for the world and rose so that everyone might have a new start. Let us pray. We remember that Jesus rose from, from a tomb, sealed with a mighty stone and guarded by soldiers. We pray for powerful people in the world today. Help them to use their power wisely, thinking about the needs of all people, risen and living Lord. Hear our prayer. We remember that today is a day of celebration for the church everywhere. We pray for those celebrating in their homes and those able to go to church. May you lead us and guide us that we may always be Easter people, sharing the new life and the new hope we have in you. Risen and living Lord, hear our prayer. We remember how sad and confused the disciples were until they knew that Jesus had risen. Be with all the people who are sad or worried or ill at this time. Bring them hope through the love of Jesus, risen and living Lord. Hear our prayer. We remember how excited the disciples were when they knew that Jesus was alive. Help us to be just as excited and ready to tell others about uh, the good news that we have to share. Risen and living Lord. Hear our prayer. Amen. Amen. And what better song to conclude with than our next. As Thomas placed his hands in the wounds of Jesus, he was told, do not doubt but believe. No more we doubt thee, glorious Prince of life. And we sing these words together. We know that we are still scattered, but Jesus through his glorious resurrection will make us more than conquerors through his deathless love and bring us safe through Jordan to his home above, but also to be gathered again soon. Thine be the glory.
So then to our final Easter Day blessing. Dance, celebrate, sing and shout for joy. Christ is risen and he goes before us into this world of fear and pain. He has called us to bring the good news of healing and hope and of redemption. Go in peace and feel the presence of the risen Lord with you now and forever. Amen.